Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, beloved friends. <clears throat> I am Carol Cohea, and we are here every evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Kardec Radio and all of its platforms to nourish our souls together. This is our one opportunity in the evening to collectively raise our thoughts and vibrations to the on high by logging in to the system of the divine creator using a two-step verification system as we learned with our friend Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. She reminded us that in order to connect, we need to first gather as one thought and a current of positive feelings, then say a prayer, a collective prayer. And what is the point of doing a collective prayer? When we pray collectively, each of us become a conduit of divine light. And Master Jesus, of course, being an envoy of God's will, multiplies the potentiality that each of us are able to produce. This is why you and I, all of us, are divine co-creators, beloved friends. So how about co-creating harmony? How about co-creating health? How about co-creating well-being? How about co-creating more faith, more hope, more joy of living? This is what we are being called to do together. Together is always better, right, John the Rose? Big hug to you, dear friend. It was nice to see you at 4 p.m. in your program. Hello, dear Daisy, flower of all of our hearts. Much love to you. Hello, dear Betty. Big hug your way. Hello, Narciso. Thank you for always being here and for the gift of your company. If we do not say your name, <clears throat> Dear friends, feel embraced and beloved and welcomed not only by us, but by the mentors on high who are truly the ones who prepared this very special moment for us. So welcome everyone. We shall begin by logging into the system through a collective prayer. Then we shall read a message in issue 47 of the Spiritus magazine by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier entitled Compliment and Criticism. Afterwards, we shall bring a couple highlights to nourish our soul together and then we shall end the sacred moment with a closing prayer. So let us pray. Tonight, dear friends, rather than listening to soothing music, we are going to exercise connecting with God by feeling God within. So as we close our eyes and open our hearts, let us feel our heartbeats, reminding ourselves that our very own physical bodies are a miniature-sized universe reflecting God's perfection. Let us thank our hearts for sustaining us. Let us thank our brains for allowing us to manifest and share our thoughts, feelings, choices, attitudes, words. 
Let us thank our internal organs for acting like an orchestra divinely conducting our physical life. Let us thank ourselves for being miniature presences of God's love in our lives allowing for our lives to be sustained physically as they work anonymously and tirelessly. Dear loving God, within ourselves, we have many unseen blessings. The very fact that we are able to breathe at this very second is an honor a privilege and a concession of your love. So breathing in love, we also exhale love in gratitude to you. And we visualize Master Jesus embracing each and every one of our brothers and sisters who right now are dealing with physical illness, physical distress, physical dis-ease. May they feel the divine breath enveloping them in divine love. May the currents of divine love coming from the divine breath also envelop their family members and all of those who do not have the light of the promised consoler to lighten their burdens. Let us pray so that through us, the light of the promised consoler shall shine all the more and humanity shall come to learn that death is but a transition that illness is a filter allowing our spirit to shine brighter, that antagonisms are an opportunity to forgive, that hatred is but an absence of love, that sadness is but a choice, that joy of living is ever present, and that God lives within all living beings of the universe. We end this prayer, Almighty God, thanking you for the gift of existing, for we only exist since you wished it so. And we pray so that we too are able to consciously love, love you, knowing that you have and always will forever love us. Almighty God, teach us to multiply your love through our thoughts, feelings, attitudes, choices, words, and actions. May we be a small and yet unique sparkle of your presence on the earth. And so be it. What a blessing, dear friends, to feel the divine sparkle shining through. Let us visualize the divine in us shining and reaching everyone around us in both realms. After all, we are indeed part of the same family. And speaking of family, our elderly brother, very wise brother, working under the command of the Christ, Emmanuel, is going to inspire our prayerful moment tonight. The message we shall read is entitled, Compliment and Criticism. We are opening issue 47 of the Spirits magazine in our own phone, as you can do as well, beloved friends, by downloading the Spiritus magazine app for free. So all the treasures are available 
in our the reach of our fingertips. So Emmanuel begins our message tonight by saying, if the sun depended on human approval to nourish the life that gravitates around it, certainly it would long ago be reduced to a pile of ashes. If the earth suffered from the sensors that are constantly made by those who categorize it as a valley of tears, it would have already descended to the condition of cemetery in space. If the seed rejected the solitude and death, to which it is relegated in the soil in order to collaborate with the sustenance of the world, the creatures would have been, for a while, without the blessings of bread. If the spring refused the incessant and permanent regime change in which it called to serve life organized on earth would be confined to primitivism and stagnation. If the tree only produced under applause, the fruit would not bless humanity stable. Workers of the truth and of the good, let us reflect on the simple lessons of nature and let us work. Give thanks to the complement that strengthens you for the fulfillment of the natural obligations of the world and enjoy with resignation the warnings that criticism gives you. However, if we need praises to work, if and if admonition paralyzes the faculties of service, we are still far from understanding the treasure of opportunities for improvement and elevation that enriches our ways. Since above all, the blessing that comforts us, the light that illuminates our road, the strength that sustains us and the support that hold, holds us always come from on high and proceed originally and only from God. What an enlightening message, dear friends. Highlight number one from us and for us, from Emmanuel to us. Everything that is good comes from God. The question for us is, have we been actually able to identify the good that we receive every day? Do we have eyes to see the good in our lives? For instance, the very ability to breathe is a gift not granted to everyone at the moment due to the pandemic. So something that is automatic for us, in other words, that we do without thinking is in fact a divine gift. Are we aware of the many divine gifts that we receive day in and day out? Mm, first therapeutic question for us. Yes, we are super aware. Ten, no, we are not aware yet, Carol. Zero. So from zero to ten in the, in the awareness scale, where are we in our ability to consciously perceive the good that is granted to us every day? Zero to ten, zero being oh oh not there yet, ten being super aware. Where are we? Then therapeutic question number two. 
within the next 24 hours, can we take three minutes of our time to identify three blessings that have been given to us? So once again, question number one, inspired by Emmanuel's message. How aware are we of the good coming from God directly to us? Question number two, inspired by Emmanuel. Can we list three gifts that we but in fact are treasures from God again directly to us? Thank you, Emmanuel, for allowing us to reflect upon God's blessings in our lives. Another lesson that Emmanuel wisely brings to our attention, beloved friends, is the fact that nature, as a reflection of God, works both tirelessly and anonymously. Third therapeutic question for us based on this blessed teachings by Emmanuel. Have we been able to work anonymously or have we been seeking for recognition? For instance, if we are called to take on a duty in our spiritist community, do we say yes because we feel the call to be of service or do we say yes to receive the thank you from our community or friends? What are we truly seeking? Are we seeking the joy of serving God or are we inside of ourselves seeking applause? from our circle of friends saying to us, oh, you do, we do everything so well, beautiful, well done, congratulations. So in other words, friends, are we seeking to receive the golden stars, symbolically speaking, of recognition from our friends and, and uh community members or are we only seeking for that inner satisfaction peace of mind that comes from the fact that we know that we are spirits redeeming ourselves and that we know that life is a school and that it is our duty and obligation to serve where are we what part of the pendulum are we moving closer towards? Are we practicing to serve anonymously? Have we been practicing? Good question. How can we then, therapeutic question number four, how can we then practice serving anonymously? Let us brainstorm a few ideas, beloved friends. We can say a prayer every day for someone that cannot thank us in return. How so? If we are watching the news and we see that someone has passed away or that a particular nation is undergoing great distress because of the pandemic, or there are children that lack what they need the most and we come to know. Not only can we make an effort to help materially, but we can offer of ourselves to them. How so? By saying a prayer. And we may be wondering, but Carol, is a prayer enough? And the question and the answer from the spirits is yes, because thought is life. When we pray, our thoughts are projected onto 
the universe through the cosmic fluid, which Kardec describes in the book, The Genesis, and then through the cosmic universal fluid, our thoughts are transmitted to others. And because our th thoughts are of electric magnetic nature, they also attract other spirits incarnate and discarnate that think alike. So let us envision this. If each of us say a prayer, let's say, every day for those who are recovering from covid our prayer shall become shining stars that shall travel through the earth and travel together as a constellation of hope so our thoughts because they are meant to fulfill the same intention which is to offer healing and hope to others they shall become a shining star and they shall join the constellation of all other spirits who share the same intention as us so can we imagine that our prayer can become a part of an earthly constellation of hope Mm -hmm. This is how beautiful anonymous work can be. We can become a part of a divine constellation. And because we take our ego out of the picture, we can only imagine how far this constellation may travel. Master Jesus has told us that to remove mountains, we only need faith as little as a mustard seed. So if we anonymously give that little sparkle of light away intentionally for the sake of those whom we don't even personally know, then our Master Jesus, through the will of God, shall multiply our goodwill. And thus we shall become a part of an earthly constellation of hope. Let us then, dear friends, learn with God first and foremost, then with Master Jesus, then with Allah Kardec, then with Chico Xavier, then, of course, with nature, to work tirelessly and especially anonymously. Because it is when we don't seek immediate recompense that we can start feeling the joy of living that is unwavering because it does not depend on the external world or the external stimuli. So what a blessing it is for us that we can choose every day to be useful for the sake of the good alone, not for the sake of being recognized, not for the sake of earning golden stars, but for the sake of simply feeling and multiplying the good would you, dear friend, like to be a multiplier of the good? That's why we, you and I, are reincarnated. And Emmanuel is reminding us, let us not seek for applause. Mm -mm. Because we have been there, done that for many lifetimes. Let us not hide and take offense either when someone calls us for readjustment because everything that comes our direction comes from god for the good so rather than taking offense we have the choice of learning the lesson so beautiful uh, guidelines offered to us today by emmanuel 
we shall repeat before we say the final prayer. Emmanuel is inviting us to seek the good in our lives, to count our blessings so we may feel the presence of God. Emmanuel is also inviting us to learn to work anonymously, becoming a part of a constellation of hope that shall travel through the earth and beyond. Emmanuel is also calling us to not take offense because as he says, if the sun, for instance, waited for applause, it would no longer be shining. Our job, our duty before our conscience and God is to shine through no matter what. These are the three main lessons that Emmanuel has brought to us tonight so as to allow us to become even more useful to God right now because the present is a gift and we know that this is the best incarnation we have ever had thus far because we are blessed with the light of the promised consoler. So let us now, dear friends, close this blessed moment, thanking God for the much that is given to us and asking God for the courage to not hide the light under the bushel, but rather to allow it to shine right here, Veronica. Welcome to Kardec Radio. It's always a pleasure to be in the gift of your company. So let us, dear friends, form a constellation of hope right at this moment and do as Emmanuel has taught us. Work anonymously for the sake of the general good. Prayer is a beautiful way of embracing Emmanuel's proposal tonight. So thank you, Emmanuel, for inspiring us. And we are now going to put your teaching, your guidelines into practice. Let us then, beloved friends, close our eyes and thank God for offering us so many immortal treasures. God, we pray, so that tonight we are inspired to serve anonymously, quietly, in the silence of our inner temples, the temples of our hearts and minds. May our minds become conduits of your love. Inspire us, almighty God, to produce, co-create thoughts of hope, thoughts of love, thoughts of compassion, thoughts of healing. May our every thought and every sentiment be a prayer of gratitude. Oh, dear God, teach us that when we open our eyes and we are able to see, that is a gift. Oh, dear God, show us that every time we inhale and are able to take in oxygen, that is a blessing. Almighty God, teach us that every time we are able to open our mouths and speak, that is a blessing. Oh, dear God, teach us that every time we are able to use our arms and hands to reach out to a fellow brother or sister of ours in humanity, that is a true blessing. 
Almighty God, teach us that every time we can use our legs and feet to walk towards those in need, we are in communion with you. Almighty God, teach us that we can multiply the good in every moment of every day by educating our minds and allowing our minds to be a reflection of your love. Thank you, dear God, for believing that we can co-create love with you. We pray that at this very instant, the vibrations of love coming from our hearts converge together and form a bouquet of golden and purple light to be given to our beloved Master Jesus. And we pray that this light becomes a constellation of hope and that each star reaches the heart of those who are in despair, those who may be homeless, those in refugee camps, those in prisons, those that are encapsulated by feelings of guilt, those who are considering committing a crime, those who are thinking about taking their lives away. Please, Mother, Father, God, offer them your loving and sweet embrace. May they receive a star of hope from the hands of the Christ, and wherever there may be one tear, Almighty God, may that tear be attended to. And tonight we ask for permission to pray for our brothers and sisters who are dealing with COVID. We pray so that your breath of life reaches their lungs, reaches their hearts, reaches their cells, reaches their beings. And we pray so that your beautiful envoy and servant, Mother Mary, can embrace them in her arms. Feeling embraced ourselves by your love, we now Thank you, dear God, and ask that you teach us to love you, for we know that you are love, and love is all there is. So be it. Thank you, dear friends, for multiplying the good together. Let us continue to be constellations of hope to one another. We wish you beautiful friends, many blessings. We thank you for us co-creating the good together through the presence of God. And we hope to see you again next time. In the meantime, we invite you to stay tuned right here on Kardec Radio because here, of course, we are always nourishing our souls. Thank you, dear friends, and bye for now.